talk about conceptual ideas about concentration. And to do that, we have some pictures of flasks here. And it says the drawings below represent flasks of aqueous solutions. Each pink dot, and I apologize, they're gray here, but so let's call them gray dots. Each gray dot represents a dissolved solute particle. Which of the following solutions is most concentrated? And uh, just to keep the math simple here, I think, is we're going to do uh, each pink dot represents a mole of dissolved solute particles. And so, um, so that means that we've got um, 500 milliliter flasks here on top, solutions A, B, and C. And we've got 250 milliliters down here on the bottom. And let's just think about which is the most concentrated of the ones on the top. Then we'll think about the most concentrated of the ones on the bottom, and then we'll compare the two. So to be the most concentrated, you're going to have to have the most particles or the most moles of particles. So looking at these, I see that this solution has more particles than either of the other ones. And if we were to imagine this as molarity, we might say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12 moles per 500 milliliters, 0 0.500 liters. So again, just getting an idea here, it'd be 12 divided by 0 0.5. Hold on. 12 divided by 0 0.5. It's actually, in this picture, we might think of this as 24 molarity. Molarity. And that's going to be more concentrated than these other ones because these ones have smaller numbers of uh, dots. And you could calculate these, but they'd be smaller. Then we come down here, um, and we would look at the number of dots, and it looks like this one has the most dots. So of these three with the same volume, this one would be the most concentrated. And to get an idea of how concentrated, so we can compare it to this one, which has a different volume, we count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We call them eight moles, and we've got 0 0.250 liters. Eight divided by 0.25. Yeah, 32 molarity of whatever these solutes are. And it's a little weird for me because um, I'm used to seeing something written right there, but I'm this is conceptual ideas, so I'm bearing with it here. All right, so uh, a couple things going on here. So first of all, this is the most concentrated one because you can see it's got the highest molarity. And then another thing is, if you were trying to do this, say, on the homework, since these are going to be uh, similar problems on the homework, then you want to compare both. Um, so it's easy to do these if they have the same, uh, same volume, because then you can just count dots. But when they have different volumes, you need a method to evaluate them. And one tool that I've learned over the years is that even if they don't give you the numbers to do, you, or like you know what molarity is, right? Because blank molarity equals blank moles over blank liters of solution. And so I'll write solute in here. Solute. There we go. So you can plug in some numbers to get an idea, and that's what we've done. So 12 moles over 0.5 liters. Well, it doesn't say moles, but you could also just put 12 over 0.5 and get the relative numbers. That's what I mean by conceptual, is we want to be able to evaluate just on pictures. Let's try another one. Slightly different type of problem, but the same pictures, <laughs> oddly enough. This one says, uh, represent flasks of aqueous solution. Each pink dot represents a dissolved solute particle. So same starting place. If you place solution D, which is right here, in a 500 milliliter flask and dilute to a volume of 500 milliliters, 
which flask best represents the new solution. And for this one, this is truly a conceptual one in my mind, because I don't think there's any calculations to do. But what we can see is, so uh, as we go from 250 to 500 milliliters, so, so, so as we add water, to go from 250 to 500 milliliters, the amount of solute does not change. And those are the gray dots. Doesn't change. So we have six dots down here. We should have, still have six dots up here. And this one will be our answer. And that's a little bit more about the conceptual nature of concentration.